All right. Sweet. Okay. Welcome to our team call. Super stoked to have you here as always. Tonight we have an amazing guest speaker. So I want to get rolling with our new coaches and our new coach welcome stuff that we do every call. So first of all, if you are a brand new coach and this is your first call, welcome to the team and the family. If your name is up here, we're so excited that you're here. Um, if you're watching the recording, we're equally as excited that you're here and you're showing up for your business. So I really wanted to quickly go through these five steps here to help you get started on the right path if you are brand new. If you're not brand new and you have new coaches who are brand new, this is a great review for you so you know what you should be helping them with and um, leading, setting them up for success in their first few months. So the first thing we do as coaches, if you haven't started your program already, is we plug into our Beachbody Challenge Group and we get results like it's our job because it is. We are doing what are called the vital behaviors, which are all listed up there. But the first one being proof that the products work goes right back up to getting results. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a six pack and you have to like look ripped and shredded. It just means that you need to be improving yourself day to day, like do being a better person than you were yesterday, every single day, showing up for you on your journey, working on your mindset, working on your health, working on your nutrition and your fitness and showing everyone who's following you that these products that we have are amazing and they work. And that's the best way for you to build your business by creating success in your own journey. That success story is what's going to sell. Stories sell, facts just tell. So you could tell everything about Shakeology. You can make a post listing all the ingredients. I don't recommend doing that. Please don't do that. Um, but sharing a story about your journey or sharing a story that time that you tasted your first shake or that first week of drinking your shakes, what you noticed, the difference in your body, like those are stories. That's what's going to help you share this effectively with people who need to hear it. And it's going to help people connect with you more because they, they are relating to your story. They're feeling the same things that you're feeling. You're never alone in this as alone as you may feel some days, you are never alone in your struggles. So the other thing we do that goes along with that as well is we connect, invite, and we follow up. So we're connecting with people who are watching our stories, liking our posts. We're connecting with those friends and family members that are on our initial contact list if you're brand new. Um, but you never run out of your warm market. So if, you're, if you've been a coach for five years and you're sitting on this call, I'm sure, I guarantee for a fact, you're still signing up people today that you knew when you signed up as a coach five years ago. I am, and I've been doing this for six years, so I know that you are as well. You never run out of your warm market people. But we are connecting with people, we're inviting them to join us and be a part of this amazing team that we have here. And we're following up with them because a lot of times people either don't see your first message, they see it and they're too busy to answer. Nobody really purposefully ignores you. And if they do, they're not your people anyway, so don't sweat it. But Always follow up because it's important to show that you actually truly do want to help these people. And I find it very off-putting when I get a message from someone in another company that just copy paste invites me and then I don't respond or if I don't see it and they never even follow up at all. So that is worse to me than spending that extra time to follow up. It's super important that you're doing that. And then helping people get results. So the people that join you, you don't just sign them up and toss them in the challenge group and you know hope they just figure out how to swim on their own. You are helping them get results. You're making sure they know what program to plug into. You're making sure that they get set up with Beachbody On Demand and they get the app downloaded. You know, you're making sure you give them recipes for Shakeology so they don't say it tastes like disgusting. Like when I made it the first time and I just put it in like lukewarm water in a cup. Like you want people to have a great experience. So you want to share those things that would be helpful for you if you were brand new. And always remember that, like always ask yourself, what would be helpful for me if I was a new challenger and do that for your new challengers and new coaches. Um, and then personal development, this is the number one thing. This will make or break you. If you're not doing it, it's going to break you. And if you are doing it, it's going to make you the leader that you always wanted to be. Um, personal development could be reading, it could be audio, it could be podcasts, but the most important thing is that it's for you, it's personal, and you're developing yourself, you're asking how can I apply this to my business, who can I share this with, 
um, you know, what can I do with this information that I've just acquired? Not just reading to check a box and then move on. Um, okay, so number three, we hit Success Club every month. That's something that successful coaches do. And it is something that's important for your business because it creates momentum in your business. If you're constantly bringing new people in, getting them results, you're creating that momentum. People are seeing that you're helping other people and it's going to help your business grow. It's also going to help you build residual income, which is really awesome. It's, they call it the income that you make while you're sleeping. It's essentially something that just continues to build on its own as people continue to stay on their journey. And then also you earn cool prizes from Beachbody. So like, who doesn't want a free tank top? You know, who doesn't want a uh, cool swag from you? I'll do anything for a free shirt, but that's just me. So make sure that you're helping at least three people get started every single month. If you have big, big goals and you want to quit your job and retire and do this full time someday, and you know, you've got these really giant goals, then obviously help more than three people. Don't just stop at three people. You want to help as many people as you can, but your bare minimum goal should be at least three to five every single month. And when you help your first two people get started, you can knock out your first rank advancement goal in the, in one swoop and hit Emerald. And it's just two coaches could be anyone who wants to support you on your journey. Anyone that you want to do this with your best friends, family members, someone that you want to get healthy with and share this with. Um, and you can, talk to your coach more about that and we'll help you like specifically with that, how to place people and everything. But it's something that you have to do. It's like a prereq course that you had to take in college before you got into the stuff you went to college for. You have to hit Emerald before you get into the, the juicy, you know, side of this business. It's just like something you have to do. So if you have a goal of building a six figure income or even if you want to make an extra 500 bucks a week, or maybe you just want to pay for your shakes, every month and not have to pay for those hit success club help three people and get to emerald you know obviously the bigger goals are the more um more you're doing that but okay and then just complete your new coach launch plan which you should get from your coach and make sure that you are hopping on our team calls and you're plugging into the team's training that we have and then if you're here you're already doing the right thing and then you just duplicate that so everything that you're learning everything that your coach is doing for you you do that for your coaches and that creates a duplication system where your coaches are building their teams and you hit Emerald, you can teach somebody else how to do it. If you hit Diamond, you can teach somebody else how to do it. Like it's, if you can figure it out, then you know how to teach somebody else how to do it. And that's how this business is built on duplication. All right, so our success club leaders, we have locked in a success club with six or more. Myself, Emmy, Erica, Catherine, Christy, Morgan, Natalie, Samantha, Samantha, Sarah, Savannah, Sydney, so many S's, and Whitney. And then on the board, these are coaches who have helped at least one person. Are Allison, Amy, Anna, Audrey, Brittany, Carly, Cassandra, Chelsea, CJ, Emily, Hannah, Holly, Jackie, Jenna, Jenny, Carrie, Karina, Carly, Katie, Katie. Got to move you guys over. Hold on. L'Oreal, Lindsay, Mackenzie, Marielle, Matt, Nikisha, Nicole, 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 <laughs> lots of Nicoles, Norm, Rachel, Rebecca, Robin, Sammy, Sarah, Taylor, and Valeria. So congratulations. If you're up on this board, you are changing lives. We've helped 112 people so far in the month of May, which is amazing. All right. Our top team volume leader this week is Emmy Schneider Green with 291. And then also on the board, we have Natalie, myself, Christy, Savannah, Whitney, Robin, Carly, Casey, Faith, Karina, Katie, and Vinny. Our team leaderboard, this is PV. This is from your personal orders and your customer orders. In the 1000 Club, we have myself, Sammy, Emmy, Christy, Savannah, Whitney, and Natalie. And we have a lot of names up here in the 500, 350, 250, and 150 Club simple thing about this is everyone on this team is adding volume to our like the team so if you are here and you're getting your shake every month like you are creating volume for the team if you're not an emerald coach you're not getting a piece of the volume that you are creating for the team so wouldn't you want to benefit and get a piece of that so get your butt to emerald so you're able to cash out on this volume that you're helping to create um as a coach here on this team and also our 
coach of the week, we have Savannah Scheffler, who actually, I'll, I'll be shouting her out again later, but she just hit diamond this week, which is super exciting. So congratulations to you for your rank advancement. Uh, it's almost the end of the month, so just make sure you know what's coming up in the last week. The new calendar will be posted soon. Our tip of the week, simple. If you haven't changed your profile picture on Facebook, or Instagram in a long, long time. Like if your Facebook picture or your Instagram photo is you from 2014, it's time to update it. It's time to change your photo. And also getting in the habit of updating your profile picture, you know, maybe twice a year or quarterly is not a bad thing because I know for one, if I see like a profile picture of someone that I don't recognize, I'm like, oh, who's that? And then I'll go and click on it. And it's like, oh, it's, it's my friend. She just changed her picture. So it kind of makes people go to your page. I don't know if that's like a proven fact, but I know for me, if I see a new picture, I'm like, who's that? And I'll click on it. I'm like, oh, oh, it's Emmy. She changed her photo. So if you haven't done it in a while, do it. Make sure it's a clear photo of your face. It's you. It's not like your dog or, you know, uh, your salad or whatever. Like it's you in the picture because people are connecting with you as their coach. All right, some announcements. What is happening? Um, the Coach Summit obviously is not happening, unfortunately, this summer, but we are having a virtual Better Together week, July 13th through the 18th. So the uh, schedule for that, I actually posted, I don't know if I posted it in the team page or on the event page that we were all on, um, but I will make sure that it's in the team page. It has the date of like the celebration and when we're going to do the, the opening ceremony and all of that. So I'm excited for it. Everyone should be there and everyone gets to go now, which is really cool. So make sure that you are plugging in that in July. Um, also something really great to share with those people that you're talking to about coaching. Um, okay. Wednesday, we have our 10 minute trainings. You know this, but I just want to make sure anyone who's new knows that I do 10 minute trainings in the rejuvenate page every Wednesday, usually talking about a different topic. I know last week I did inviting and the week before I was talking about, um, building your Instagram and posting like every week, it's something different. So it's a great opportunity for you to learn a new skill. Um, or learn new things about something that you might already think you know, but there's always something new to learn. Um, also, be sure that you check our team page cover photo. I have updated some of the details for onboarding new coaches. So make sure that you're aware of the new changes so you know how to plug your new coaches into the system. Challenge packs, $20 off still. The month is coming to a close, so make sure you let those people know who are ready to get signed up or have been kind of hesitating that, you know, the sale is ending soon. And if they really want to get involved, now's a great time to do that. Mixed berry, we know we're still patiently waiting or maybe not so patiently waiting for it to arrive. Um, but there is a new flavor of Energize if you didn't know about that. Um, apparel's on sale. Alana's book is out. I know Sammy's reading Alana's book and she's loving it. So um, definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, we're launching in France tomorrow, I think, or Thursday, whatever, tomorrow, tomorrow's the 27th. So make sure that if you have any friends who are in France, you're connecting with them and you never know, you might not know anyone in France, but you might know people who know people in France. So put it out there and see if anyone that you know knows anyone over there. Our social media shout outs. Sorry, this is like a lot today, but I want to make sure that everyone gets their little spotlight our social media shout outs this week. I wanted to shout out Lauren Anderson for her curiosity marketing post example. Uh, she was talking about how she was waiting for her energized to come, but she didn't call it energized. I don't remember what she called it. Um, but it made me think like, if I didn't know what energized was, I would be like, Ooh, what is that? Like, what are you waiting for? That sounds really awesome. And she was like, you know, I'm waiting for my energized, but for now coffee will do or my all natural something she said. So that's a great way to talk about the products that doesn't blab and tell everyone what it is and makes them want to know more. So I wanted to give her some recognition for that amazing post and she's super brand new and she's killing it. And then also Anna Riechling for her transformation post. I know that it's scary to do this, especially if it is your first time putting yourself out there like that. So I wanted to give you a special shout out for being brave and being bold 
um, and posting your transformation photo. And you look amazing, by the way. Um, our transformation highlight is Sarah Jennings for Morning Meltdown 100. I've been waiting for this transformation for 100 days. I'm not even kidding you. Sarah has done such a great job showing this program from day one to day 100. And every day I'm like checking her story because I want to see how she's doing with her program. And she's counting down the days and I was like, she's almost at 100. It's just like so exciting to follow her doing this program. And she just had a baby like less than a year ago and she looks incredible. So if you don't follow Sarah, I highly recommend following her. Um, not just for this like awesome transformation, but she does a really amazing job sharing the coaching opportunity in her story and just in her posts. And you'll get to hear a lot from her next week because she's doing our team call. So I kind of ruined the surprise, Sarah, but I'm excited for that. And then our Level Up Tribe Award is Savannah for hitting Diamond this week and moving her business forward. I know that this is just the first of many advancements for you this year. So shout out to you for setting a goal and making it happen. And then our under 30 shout out is my new coach, Jules, for completing her new coach training like in a flash she's just I, I mean amazing so I wanted to give you some special recognition she's just like literally doing the things and showing up and having fun doing it and that's what this business is all about you know finding the joy in what you're doing so so proud of you I know that I will be recognizing you soon for emeralds and then if you have anyone else you want to shout out please do so in the chat while I welcome our guest speaker to the call. All right, chat is blowing up. Not surprised, everyone's doing amazing this week. So I wanted to introduce our guest speaker, Heather. Heather Shipley and I are in a mastermind group chat and we're also part of this group that's called the round table. So when you become a five-star diamond coach and you are, you know, you're invited to be a part of this group the CEO is in there, all the people from corporate are in there, and all the five star and above coaches are in there. So it's a really cool experience to be a part of this group. And what's really awesome about it is how everyone is so willing to help and share and connect. And there was a thread in there that was like, hey, you know, does anyone want to swap team calls? And I was like, hell yeah. And I reached out to Heather and I was like, girl, I need you to share with my team because your team is blowing up you are so, so busy and you're a mom. You just had a new baby. Like there's so much going on in your life and you're still crushing it. And I think that everyone needs to hear from you. So I'm excited that she's here tonight. She is a seven star diamond coach, two time elite, just had a beautiful baby. So cute. And she's also a full-time professor on top of being a mom of two, on top of being a badass coach. So I'm just going to shut up and hand it over to you. I'm going to stop sharing my screen as well so we can see your pretty face and just blow our minds because I know you're going to do it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, first off, like shout out to your team. That was so cool. And you, I think, are the most organized person that I have ever seen. I need to get a little bit more organized. I'm like, okay, I have to get my stuff together now after this call. Seriously, I've guest spoke. Um, I'll kind of talk a little bit about me, but, um, Emily Favre is my coach and you're going to kind of hear how we met. And then her coach is Ashley Molstad. So we get, um, exposed, I guess, to a ton of coaches. And I will say that I don't know that there is any other team call that has been so organized and like so much full of life and recognition. So that was incredible. Um, so you guys are really lucky to have the coach that you have and thank you for having me on. Um, a little bit about me. If you guys don't, I'm going to share my screen. Um, I have true teacher fashion. Oh, wait. Can I share my screen? <laughs> I, it's okay. It says host has disabled screen sharing. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> let, okay. me, let me play with it and I'll let you keep going. And okay. So, a little bit about me. I started coaching 
exactly 27 months ago. So I've been a coach a little over two years um, when I started coaching. So if you guys are, I saw a lot of new faces on there. If you're a brand new coach or if you are in a season of life right now and by season, you guys know what I mean, like the, the hard seasons. Um, I actually started coaching during probably one of the hardest seasons in my entire life. Um, a little bit about my story, fall 2017, was just a really like one of those rock bottom times in my life. So um, taking it a little bit back, I don't, I've told my story. I got to speak last year at Summit and on the national wake up call as well. So if you've heard it, I apologize in advance, but um, I grew up, I danced growing up, I cheered in college, but I, um, I never really had an example, a female example of long-term healthy living. It was always quick fixes and fad diets. And that's just what I was around growing up. I danced for the Atlanta ballet when I was little. I remember being in the bathroom. My daughter is seven. My oldest daughter, which is, I, I, I have two now, I forget. Um, my husband's taking care of her downstairs and I hope they get along. They have a very bad track record of getting along. <laughs> and she's, she's 11 weeks old right now. So, um, but my oldest, I was about her age and I remember being in the bathroom at the dance studio um, and seeing the older girls and they would look in the mirror and do how us females do. They would pinch this and say that and talk about all the things they wanted to change. And I just remember being really little thinking how beautiful and ethereal they were. And then they were talking about wanting to change. Um, as a cheerleader and as a dancer, I was weighed a lot and um, you had to maintain your weight. In college, actually, I had male coaches and they would weigh us monthly. And if you weighed a pound over your tryout weight, you had to run, you couldn't practice, you had to run until you weighed that again. And so I just was around disordered mentality behavior for a long time and developed full-blown eating disorders in college, anorexia and bulimia. Um, I would like to say that I, my sorority sisters, parents and coach all intervened like like the show intervention um they didn't know it but in the same day and i don't it was by the grace of god i stopped the behaviors but the mentality was there so um well into my 30s i probably took diet pills from the time i was 15 until the time i was 30 um and was still just after that quick fix fad diet i didn't want to put in the work i just wanted the results and so um, in fall of 2017, my husband and I, um, we actually got pregnant. We were expecting our second child and went in for the ultrasound. We had had our first ignorance is kind of bliss and we went in and the ultrasound didn't go as planned. We were told that we were, that pregnancy wasn't viable and that we were losing it. Um, I don't believe in coincidence anymore. And as I tell my story, I hope you don't either. Um, but I, my body, it was like held on to that pregnancy longer than it probably should have. And we lost that pregnancy on October 15th, which if you know anything about loss and infertility, that is um, infant loss, um, pregnancy and infant loss awareness day. And so I just knew from that moment on, also the statistics say one in four women experience loss. And my three best friends from high school were all pregnant at the same exact time. We were due within like a week of each other. And they all went on to have healthy baby girls and we did not. Um, so I knew there would be purpose in that pain one day, but I lived in that pain for a really super long time. My parents split up. Um, just some really bad things happened in our family life. And I was literally, I was hanging on by a thread. Um, and then I just decided one day, so kind of my mantra is to control what you can control and give God the rest. And so I was spending my, I was this miserable freaking person because I was spending my time focused on all the things that I couldn't control role, the way my family was going and that we weren't having the second child. And I wasn't living my life in gratitude um, for the things that I already had. And I wasn't releasing um, the things that I couldn't control. And worse, I wasn't controlling the things that I could. I wasn't taking care of my body. I wasn't taking care of my mind. All those vital behaviors that Carolyn talked about at the beginning of the call, I wasn't doing those things to make myself a better person or to live a better life. So I started turning that purpose, uh, that pain into purpose, I started writing a book called Brokenhearted Hope. 
because if you've ever been a part of a season, whether it's loss or not, um, you kind of feel better sometimes just knowing that you're not alone. And so back then, um, it was something that people didn't really talk about. Um, I feel like it's more talked about now. Um, but I started compiling this book and I saw actually my daughter's kindergarten teacher at the time tagged me in this post she had shared from this girl that was talking about her miscarriage story and to it was all about hope and to share it if it touched you or spoke to you in any way. And it was, I, I messaged the girl and I said, Hey, I would love to share this, but I wanted to get your permission because actually it's for a book. Would you be interested in being a part of it? Never expected her to message me back because her post had gone pretty viral. Um, and she messaged me back within minutes and her name was Emily Favre. And so she was a part of the book. Actually, as I was writing the book, um, we found out we were pregnant again and went in for that appointment. And I actually, as the book was going to print to be edited and published, I found out I was losing that pregnancy as well. So I ended up needing every word of my own book than anyone else. It was almost like it was written for me to read again. It was crazy. But Emily was chapter 10 and it was about celebrating life no matter how small. And I ended up writing a chapter 11 that was called Even If. And so it was like, even if I never get this answered prayer of a second child, God is still good. I'm still going to control what I can control and give him the rest. Um, ends up, um, slowly, slowly through the years went on. Um, every single person that contributed to the book, there's like 25 people. Everybody had their rainbow baby except us until March of this year. We actually just had ours. Her name is Blakely. And like I said, she's 11 weeks old. So, um, but uh, back to Beachbody, how all of that came to fruition. First thing, really important, share your story and get vulnerable. Cause I did not connect with Emily because of her food or her side-by-sides or anything like that. I connected with her. I would have never found her had she not gotten vulnerable and shared that story. I first connected with her as a person and then every Sunday. So if you don't do this, I recommend doing it. I try to do it now. Um, but every Sunday she would share this side-by-side -side. and her body was, it was when she was in the 80 day obsession test group and her body, like at first it was like not a lot of change, but she was talking about the mental and fit, like energy was changing her hope and all of that. Um, and then I saw her body started to change. But the thing that I noticed the most was this light that was coming back into her eyes and the confidence that she was starting to share on social media. So I reached out to her and I said, Hey, tell me about this 80 day thing. But, and it's funny because we laugh about our first message back and forth. I said, but don't ask me to coach because I've done it before. I had, I had actually gotten like turbo fire, I think DVDs from a garage sale. And then a couple of years before that I had done 21 day fix. Um, I'm pretty sure it was still DVDs then. Um, also as a coach, I coached for like 30 days and quit and didn't really do anything. Um, but I told her I had done all the things. I've done a lot of different MLMs. Um, I actually didn't tell my husband when I did this one because I was scared of what he was going to say. He rolled his eyes pretty hard, but, um, and he was very, very, very skeptical. So, and I want this to be interactive. If you guys have questions as I'm sharing, please do ask questions. Um, if anybody has a skeptical spouse, just pop in the comments like, me too, help. Um, but my husband was the most skeptical. He's an accountant. So he's like, he's all about money and like all the things. So um, I didn't tell him at first, but I, I reached out to Emily and said, tell me about this 80 day thing, but don't ask me to coach. She didn't. Um, actually, I was probably one of the most annoying people ever. And she says to this day, she still gives people a chance because of me, because they could be their next Heather Shipley, I guess. Um, but I was like, well, I already have the 21 day fix DVDs. I'll just do that. And I'll just get the sliders and loops on Amazon and I'll just do the free, I'll do the 14 day free trial. And I did that. And I was like, well, I'll just, I want to make sure I'm going to stick with it. So I did quarterly bod, uh, for a hot minute. And then after the three months of quarterly bod, I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to go all in. She let me in her group. I started getting results. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm going to get that challenge pack thing you originally said. And she told me all the things like she did her job. She was like, you're going to end up paying more doing all of this. And I did like, I pretty much 
could have bought three challenge packs for the price of one with all the crap that I, I did. But I was really, and I would, and I, I thought it was a couple months. Emily looked back at our messages and she said that I talked with her and made excuses for seven months before I joined her. So if you have people that are like, you know, and, and I think, you know, my coaches are like, we tend to self-reflect when things don't go perfectly. It's like, what did I say wrong? Or maybe I'm not cut out to do this. Like I watched Emily for seven months. I was in, I think three or four coach sneak peeks before I ever decided to actually coach with her and go all in. So, um, anyways, so I watched her 80 day journey. I went all in. I don't know. Okay. I was going to share the screen, but it's okay. Um, so I started doing 80 day obsession. I went all in, you know, why I went all in because I saw Emily go all in. Um, Emily's like the poster person for 80 day obsession. I'm pretty sure she was in the commercial. Um, okay, here we go. Let's see. It still says host disabled attendee screen sharing. It's okay. We'll figure it out. And if not, I can just keep talking. <laughs> I feel like Zoom has like weird rules now and it's gotten a lot harder to figure out. Um, but Emily went all in with 80 day obsession. She followed the program to a T and people ask her like, did you really do time nutrition? Did you really use the containers? Did you really do the things? And she really did the things. So because she did the things, I did the things. I lost 24 pounds doing 80 day obsession. And Emily actually, I went from a size probably 12 to a size, I don't know, I've been, it was like a zero two, which I wasn't even that size in high school. Um, but I went all in because Emily went all in too. Emily, one thing that she encouraged me, so some of you guys probably have people in your challenge groups right now that are like, ah, I don't know if coaching is for me. Um, encourage them. The first thing Emily made us do as challengers, and she still does this today, um, was actually, she told us, she just took a picture of her fridge and she told us to post a picture of our fridge with our meal prep stuff or something that signified the beginning of our journey. And so I posted that first post the night before that I started 80 day of my fridge. It was a disgusting picture and it's like, whatever. But I declared that I was going to start using as a customer, that I was going to start using my social media as my accountability partner. And I was going to post through this 80 day journey. I started coaching without realizing what I was doing. And that was genius on Emily's part because people were watching me. Um, and I did all the things that you're not supposed to do as a coach. Like my lighting was horrible. I held up my shake. I, I used words like 80 day obsession and energize and shakeology. You don't do any of that. And I know Carolyn teaches you guys those things. Um, but I, I did day one, day two, day three. I involved my daughter. She was, I think, four at the time. And so we would just take our sweaty selfie picture every day. We ran out of hands when we got to day 10. So somebody was like, get a felt board. They were cool then. I think they're still cool, maybe, hopefully, because I'm about to start using one again. I'm on day eight right now. Um, but we would felt board every day. People watched us show up every single day. I went live on day 80 and cried. And I think people were crying with me. But I showed up every day of the journey. I did start, I started coaching about 20 days in. Um, and you guys, I'm a talker. So without my slides, I'm like all over the place. So I apologize. Um, hopefully you guys are getting something out of this so far. Um, but I shared my journey every step of the way. So I started coaching February 20th of 2018. And you guys, I, for two years straight, I feel like I've just now earned the right to not post every single day. But for two years straight, I posted every day, Monday through Sunday on my timeline. I was on my stories every day and I invited every single day. Okay. Um, so that consistency is key. Those vital behaviors, the personal development, all of that. I did those things. If Ashley and Emily told me to jump, I just said how high because they had done it and they proved that it worked. So it was like, I'm not going to try to figure it out or do something different. I'm just going to do what they tell me to do. I've been in this business long. There is no secret to this business. It's just the consistency, the showing up every day, expanding your network and inviting and doing it over and over and over and over again with purpose and joy. Because I've seen people check the boxes, not with the joy and the energy, and it doesn't work the same way. Also making it your own. Um, so a little bit about my story. Um, I went two-star diamond in 56 days from start to there. 
Um, I had a friend that was like going to do 80 day with me. We just ran together and I built my husband along with her and then I stalled out. So um, normally I have this slide that talks about the path to success isn't linear because it wasn't. It sounds cool. So as a team, we went from inception to elite in 10 months. We actually went elite, seven star diamond elite within 10 months as a team. Um, but that person that ran with me from the start called me a couple months in and was like, I'm moving, I'm pregnant, and I'm just not going to do this anymore. So I'm not going to coach. And she quit. And I remember um, it was, I had like one other working coach. So if you guys are new and you're like, my, the number one question I get is how do I find working coaches? Um, she, and she quit on me. And what do you do when people quit? So she quit. I had to, and I also got a compliance ding. <laughs> um, and I had to completely start over and it was like, okay, that was in July of 2018. So really I went from July to November and we went seven star qual. Um, but it was really just setting the example of the things that I was doing to get my team to do too. I call it the text effect. I put them in a text strand together, breathed belief in them and said, I think you guys are the, you guys have the potential to go diamond. I mean, I'm putting you guys in a text strand together. Um, let's do this thing together. And I was Emily's guest to leadership that year. Dylan was deployed. And I remember going to leadership. Um, leadership is something to get to. If you've never been a part of leadership, you've just got to be one star to get there. Um, or new leader. Leadership is five star. Um, both are things that you need to get to. But the quality of training and the people that you're around, um, like everybody's a working coach. Everybody there sees it as a business. And it's not just like girlfriend club community. And so I was like, I need to be here next year on my own merit. I don't want to be a guest here next year. I'm going to be here. Um, so I didn't even know what elite and all that stuff was. I just knew I wanted to get to leadership the next year. So text effect happened. I'm trying to think the other things that I usually tell as part of my story. That first year, um, I heard uh, Carolyn talked about warm market. I remember I went through all my Facebook friends A to Z. I messaged all them. I messaged all them at least three times. So if you haven't done that, go do that. That's how I got to two star diamond. But I remember I, I texted Emily and I said, I think I'm running out of people. And Emily was like, I've been coaching four years, never run out of people, go find your people. Like there are plenty of people that are overweight, obese and unhappy in the world that need the gift that we have to offer. And that day something switched in me. I wasn't bugging people anymore. I was sharing a gift. And if I didn't share this with the people that were my friends and my followers and liking my stuff and watching my story, then I was being selfish. And so now um, people ask me, do you cold message? First off, I don't believe in that. I don't cold message, but also you need to redefine your definition of cold. So for me, anybody who likes my stuff, watches my stories, follows me or is my friend, you've invested in my journey in some way. It's very clear from my bio and my timeline what I do. So you either just wanna cheer me on, you're curious, or you need this gift that I have to offer. So I invite everybody. Um, but that was a shift for me from Emily is that don't have a scarcity mindset, have an abundancy mindset, and that this is a gift that must be shared. Um, my little phrase, my team name is Faith Over Fear. And my phrase is the greater your purpose, the smaller your fear. So I think as new coaches, especially even as seasoned coaches, we can be afraid to do that sneak peek or to, I have a whiteboard that is magical. Every year I um, do roadmaps, like put diamond roadmaps on here and whatever my goal is. And we don't always hit it, but like that first year I roadmapped elite on here and there were the seven girls that I felt like could get to diamond. So I put them on my whiteboard and there's just something magical about people seeing their names. Um, and so I'm about to do it again. I don't know if we'll hit it, but I'm going to whiteboard superstar and put it up there. We, there are girls on one leg that are not even there, but, um, really writing it down on paper and being the leader and breathing that life into people is really important. Um, again, you guys ask questions, but my kind of tip, so Carolyn asked me to tell my story a little bit. I know that was all over the place, so I'm sorry. Um, but also to talk about leadership, 
And so kind of my tips for leadership, my first one is to be yourself. And I know that sounds really simple, but I think for my first at least year, I was trying to be Ashley or Emily or Bonnie or whoever else that I look up to in this business. And I was also being who I thought I wanted people, I, who, who I thought people wanted me to be. So when I started this business, it was very faith over fear. I would share Bible verses and I was just, I was scared to post, like I love wine and margaritas and I was afraid to post things because I, I was, a, I was afraid of the judgment, right? I didn't want anyone to say anything and, and all of that. And so I was just not fully myself. I talked a lot of, um, about my story because it was from depressed to, you know, taking control of what you can control and that kind of thing. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys do the Enneagram, if you guys know yours, like post in the comments, I'm a three wing too. Um, I actually did a poll in the round table, uh, Carolyn, I knew you would be a three. <laughs> um, I actually did a poll in the round table of the top beach body coaches and Mo, oh my God, you guys are a team of threes. Okay. No wonder you're killing it. And also that you had an amazing presentation, but most of the top beach body coaches are threes, I think followed by. I want to say like sevens, ones, there may be some twos in there. I don't know, but it was like overwhelmingly majority are threes because we're the achievers, right? But it's, it can be a blessing and a curse sometimes, but be yourself because I, um, I remember Amy Silverman talked on a call one time and she said, you know, you're going to know you have your team when you get to summit or you go somewhere and you like really enjoy hanging out with those people. And so I know when we, one of my first trips with Beachbody, Emily and Ashley went superstar together and we went to Beverly Hills and everybody there was like, wait, you're like really fun. And I was scared to death to meet Ashley. Um, she was still foodie girl fitness back then. So she was like, you know, um, and everybody was like, you're so much fun. Like you're not like who we thought you were at all. Like you're actually a good time. I think they thought I was going to be a stick in the mud, to be honest. And so they're like, wait, you're fine. Like we need to see more of this. And so, um, I would say really, la it took me almost a year and a half, two years to feel comfortable and confident in my own skin to be myself. So that's my first tip as a leader, just be unapologetically you. Cause until you do that, you're not going to attract the people that you want to hang out with and do this business with. Um, as a three, I hate complaining. I hate excuses. Like, and I don't want to be surrounded by that. So I make it very clear now that like this, I used my phrase when I first started being a coach, I would say, I built this business in pockets of time and in the car rider line. That was another thing that Carolyn wanted me to talk about is how do I build this business as a full-time professor? I teach business communication at the university of Alabama. Um, so how do I work this business as a mom? When I first started, I was like a girl scout troop leader. I had the book. I led a women's ministry. I did small groups at the church, like all the things. And so that was my phrase. I said, I built this business in pockets of time and in the car rider line, which was true. Like, like I worked this business any chance I would be on the toilet, like between classes, sending out invites and answering messages. Um, my students are probably like, what does, why does she go to the bathroom so much? But um, I, I coined that phrase, right? Well, the car rider line um, was really, I had to get there at two o'clock to get a good spot because their moms, I think that get there at 9 a.m. and just sit there and read books all day. I don't, that would be really nice, but I don't have that kind of time. But I would have to get there early and they didn't let them out until like 2.45. So there was 45 minutes every single day that I was sitting in my car waiting on my daughter. And instead of just like scrolling Instagram or Facebook, I started scrolling with an intention and I'm scrolling and inviting, 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 and not scrolling and being like, man, I really wish we could go to the beach. And I wish I had that kind of car and her clothes are really cute. And like, I stopped scrolling and looking at everybody else's life and started scrolling and messaging to create the one I wanted to live. Um, so I stopped talking. I stopped watering down this business. 
like, yeah, pockets of time. Now, like people know I get up at 5 a.m. and do power hour. Well, not right now because my daughter's not sleeping through the night one day again, <laughs> but I'm getting up at 5 a.m. and working out. I'm showing that. I'm showing closing my computer down at 1030 a.m. I'm showing doing this team call and doing that team call and all the hustle. You've got to glamorize the hustle because what you talk about is what you attract. And so now on my getting started right and welcoming or coach sneak peeks event, I talk about like the number of invites that I send in the work that I put in. Cause I want to attract women that are willing to put in the work, not women that are just like going to hit one bump in the road and leave me. Um, so talk, be yourself, talk about what you want to attract. Um, I was going to say simplify, excuse me, simplify your process, but it looks like you guys have a very simplified process because of your leadership. So don't make that more complicated than it needs to be. For us, we do something similar. We have getting started right calls. We have push to emerald calls and we have a, like a self-led training university. It sounds like you guys have all of that as well. Um, so simplifying the process, sticking to your guns. This is something that I learned early on. So my first year, this is just me being really super transparent. Um, my first year we hit seven star elite. I had promised them a beach beach trip. So they were like, I was like, where do you guys want to go? What's going to motivate you to hit diamond? And they decided Disney would motivate them. So we were like diamonds for Disney. And it was like this fun thing. And so we went into seven star qual the last week that you could, it's like Thanksgiving week, talk about stress. So from Thanksgiving to new year's, we had to hold strong and we did seven star, which was fun. And then everybody dropped January 1st, everybody dropped. And when we went on the beach trip, there were two that were still diamonds. And I was pretty salty for like a good year about it. We didn't go on our retreat until May. And um, so that was something that it was like, I had to stick to my guns that first year. They just went on the diamond retreat just because they were diamond. And now my retreats, it's like we up the ante every year, but you have to hit and hold diamond, not just once. You need to do that every quarter. Okay. Like there's grace because I believe in grace, but you have to be hitting success club. I saw in the slideshow that you guys just have success club six is a minimum in your business for us. I remember hearing Ashley say it one time and that's all I needed to hear it. She said, you should hit SC five by the fifth and 10 by the 10th. And I didn't know why, but I heard her say it and I was like, okay, done. So in the 27 months that I've been a coach, I've hit SC 10 or higher every single month because she said to, um, because it's, you know, and now I know why, um, that's, if you want to level up, you've got to be hitting at least SC, SC 10 to 20 is diamond status beyond 20. That's star diamond status. Um, so hitting success club, um, but sticking to your guns. So I am a people pleaser, any like recovery people pleasers over here. I don't want anybody to be mad at me. And so I like historically, when I would set down ground rules or like have this text strand or this dash and you had to be something by a certain date to get something, um, I would like extend the rules a little bit. And my husband was the one that was like, if you want to be a leader, you need to like stick to your guns. And so, um, when I started sticking to my guns, people started respecting the rules a little bit more. Um, so sticking to your guns and then getting out of the way. So again, being an Enneagram three, I'm a control freak. And so I tend to want to like handhold people. And I like for people, I guess, to be dependent on me. And, um, I like them to get the stuff done, but I like to be a part of it, I guess. So getting out of the way and letting people step up as leaders, asking my people to be, and it, it sounds like you guys are already doing that, but asking my people to be guest speakers within our team and, and things like that. So letting people, giving them, like coach them, but then stepping out of the way um, to let them kind of develop themselves as well. Um, I taught, I wanted to talk about posting every single day, Monday through Friday. I don't, and I want you guys to ask questions, um, posting every day, Monday through Sunday. I said Friday, Monday through Sunday without exception. There were times my daughter broke her arm and I was like, I haven't posted yet today. So I took a picture of us holding hands with her broken arm. And I was like, nobody wants to see this. Like, this is sad and scary. And the floodgates opened up support. Like when people start to follow you, they follow your whole life. So I don't post about Beachbody every day. No one wants me to be a Beachbody billboard. But now it's funny because people know, people know my husband's name. They know his 
profession. They know our dog's name. They know that I love leopard and Chick-fil-A and that I'm a rainbow mom and I have two girls. Like people invest in your life and they want to see that. So I posted seven days a week without exception and talked on my stories. I was scared to death to talk on my stories. I failed public speaking in college, which is hilarious that that's what I do now. Um, what else? Um, weekly inviting numbers. I like to be realistic about the numbers. So every single week I've been coaching for, I think I did the math today, 118 weeks. I think, I think 118 weeks. And every week since I've started, I have sent out at least 250 invites every single week. Okay. I am a two-time elite coach, seven star diamond. Next week we should lock in three star elite as a team. I do not, I still don't, you guys, I still don't have the luxury to not invite. So if you are not inviting, private message inviting, you are not moving your business forward. I actually was in Instagram jail twice last month and I paid for it. That rule about five by the fifth and 10 by the 10th, the 10th of this month, I was at SC two. Two. I had gone through a really hard season. Our daughter has had some feeding issues and that kind of thing. It's, I've been in a season. Um, but I always say you reap what you sow two to three weeks ago. I'll repeat that because it's just that good. You reap what you sow two to three weeks ago. So when you come to your coach or you're thinking, I'm doing all the things, I'm inviting everybody, I'm showing up. Yeah, but what were you doing two to three weeks ago? And so this month I was paying for that season that I was going through and I had to up my ante. Like the 250 that I was sending out wasn't working, right? Or I had to up my game in my stories and start inviting in my stories more and reinvent. I feel like I have to reinvent myself every single month, if not quarter, um, because you just constantly, my, my husband says the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing and expecting a different result. So like, yes, you should do the vital behaviors, but if you're not seeing the return on that, like you're not doing something and it can be as small. I've had girls that like their tiny tweak was like freaking smiling in their stories and looking more inviting or, you know, like just tiny things. Um, but you've got to show up. The other thing I talked about my weekly invite numbers, um, five by the fifth, 10 by the 10th, SC 10, the fortunes in the follow up. Um, Carolyn talked about that at the beginning of you guys in your call. This week, I actually, I do this call called Inviting 101 that walks through my, pro I'm like the unofficial queen of inviting, I guess, on our team. And so I do this Inviting 101 call for our whole upline. And um, when I did the call, I actually had live pulled up messages. I, I like hid their names. But when I scrolled, like there were two people this week that had checked out with challenge packs. And when I scrolled up to our conversation, one of them, I had sent her an initial Hey Girl a year ago. And the other one, I sent her an initial Hey Girl two years ago. And so just proof that, and I actually, I was like, it was egg on my face because I probably would have signed, they could be like really successful coaches by now because I could have probably signed them a year or you know, two years ago had I actually followed up like I should have. And so, but anyways, they joined me now. But the fortune's in the follow-up, and you can't follow up too much. I usually follow up my initial follow-up. Don't get in your head about ghosting and no's. You should be so focused on how many people you're running to invite that you don't even have time or negativity in your brain to even think about ghosts and no's. You're just positive poly messaging everybody because it's your job to share the gift. Um, and so, anyways, um, I follow up probably the next day. And then I like to follow up maybe a week or two, like when my boot camp's about to start. Um, I always set deadlines for boot camp. I have an ongoing boot camp, so like technically there's no deadline, but people like urgency. So I tell them like it's about to start. And then monthly after that, until either they die, they tell me to take them off the list or they join me, right? So continue to follow up forever and ever and ever. And I have people now two years later that thank me for continuing to show up, that I've inspired them in life more than their fitness journey, and that they say, thank you for never giving up on me. I wasn't ready then, but I'm ready now. And then they, they come to you, and they're some of your best people. Um, so follow up, follow up, follow up. And then for personal development, 
actually the number one question I ask when coaches come to me and they're struggling, I'm not like, what are you posting? What are you, what's your Hey Google? How many invites are you sending out? My number one question is what personal development are you doing? Because I can tell, I can tell when coaches aren't doing personal development and you have to, I love what Carolyn said. I'm adding that to my repertoire. It has to be personal to you. Like just because 10 X or wash your face was cool for Sally doesn't mean it's good for you. I do two every day. I do something for my soul and my spirit, some, like that I need inside, that mean girl inside of my head. I do something for me personally every single day, but I also do something for business as well. Something that helps me be a better leader, something that like 10X rule by Grant Cardone is my favorite. I do it over and over again because I also try to do something that's going to kick me in the pants from a business aspect too. Um, lately I've told my husband, I don't have the capacity right now to open and read a book. And I just want like to finish something in my day right now with a newborn. So he's been sending me short, like five to 10 minute YouTube videos. That husband that was really skeptical. Remember now he does PD and is on his like 12th round of lift four with me. Um, but he sends me short YouTube videos every day and that's been enough. The days I don't feel like inviting the days that I'm too tired from getting up all night with a newborn, it, it kicks me in the pants. So I do something for both. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back through and look at the questions. I'll go in reverse order. So Carolyn asks, how do you do your monthly follow-ups individually or bulk through email? I'm really bad, you guys. So I am so old school. I'm a pen and paper girl. And my flow could be a lot. I've heard Google streak is like amazing. <laughs> but I honestly, my first place I go is my share cart to the people who have viewed it and not checked out or the people that haven't even viewed it at all. And those are my first follow ups because they they were ready at one point, right? They got scared, whatever. So those are my first people to follow up. Um, and then I do on my Instagram page has, have a form that I have people filled out. So I'll go back through the form and talk to those people cause they were almost ready. And then, I mean, my workflow honestly is I just, um, I do a power hour of people who are liking my posts, watching my stories and my new followers. And as I'm going, if I'm doing my job, showing up on my timeline and creating engaging, valuable content, those people are going to keep popping up. And so when I go to my likes and I see that, you know, Sally liked and I already sent her a Hey Girl and the next day she liked something else, I'm going to send her the follow up. And then just, I just go, through, it's not like an exact science, but it's been working for two, three years. So I'm not going to change it um, for now, I guess, like maybe when I get a little bit more sleep. So um, a little bit of both, share a cart through the emails with the forms. When I'm going through my inviting flow, the follow-ups just organically happen. And when I say 250 invites a week, my goal is usually 50 a day. But y'all, there are days that I'm behind the podium from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. And I like barely have time to use the bathroom. I'm like eating meals um, behind the computer screen. So if I don't get it done one day, say I don't do my 50, then I'm doing 100 the next day. I always, my average weekly output is 250, and those are touches. So they do include initial Hey Girls and follow-ups as well. Hopefully that makes you feel a little bit better. Um, invites include the, the re-invites, the follow-ups. Um, let's see. Is there any other questions? Or you guys can unmute and ask questions if you want to. The book is, Audrey asked the book, the book is called Broken Hearted Hope, and you can get it on Amazon. Okay. Any other questions? Nobody has any questions? Don't be shy. Come on. <laughs> Copper must have a question. He started barking. Oh, <laughs> Anytime I'm talking to somebody else, like who's not him, he's like, wait, who are you talking to? Uh, that's <laughs> ours. We, we have like a four pound. He was supposed to be like 15 to 20 pounds, but he's four pounds full grown, a cavapoo named Jack. Uh -huh. And he like, he thinks he's the guard dog of our entire neighborhood. So <laughs> any sound or anything like that, he yeah. is barking. Um, we've but got I guess one is, go ahead. 
we've got two. One's 125 pounds and one is like 50 pounds and the little one is the most obnoxious and loud yeah. and thinks he's like a scary dog. So. They have little man syndrome, I guess. They yeah. have to make up for <laughs> what they lack in size and their barks. Yep. Um, totally good. Yeah. I mean, I guess this business is so crazy because there's no secrets to it. It's just, I mean, I have, if you guys watch the national wake up call, um, Holly Richardson is one of my newer coaches that is killing it right out of the gates. And she just, and, and I have, I had a meme. I don't know if you guys are meme fans, but I had a meme saved on my phone, something about, um, match my hustle and inspire me to elevate mine. I had it as a meme on my phone for a long time because it was my dream. Um, for my first probably two full years, it was like, I'm sending that number of invites every day, relentlessly. I'm showing up. I lost 40 pounds. Like I'm doing all the things and I didn't have anybody that was doing all the things with me. It was kind of frustrating. Um, I luckily I'm on an upline with people that just run insane, but I wanted a team and a tribe that was like running with me. Not that I was having to drag along. Like that's not fun as a coach to have to drag. Don't drag people. That's another leadership tip. Like don't drag people. They either want it or they don't. You just lead by example and eventually you'll get your people. Holly's probably the first person. There's been a couple months that I've been like, pregnant, like super pregnant and on maternity leave and struggling that she's either hit the same SC or beat me in SC. And as Enneagram threes, we're really competitive. So, um, she's a three as well, but this two and a half years in, this is the first time that I've had people matching my level of work and hustle. So I just think you can, you have to stay positive. It's all that mindset. You have to be the example. I remember Ashley told me one time, um, speed of the leader, speed of the pack is actually not true. It's speed of the leaders, um, half the speed of the pack. Like your rock star is probably going to do about half of what you do. And then you're going to have people that kind of do less or whatever. So if you want to be a star diamond coach with diamonds under you, you need to be hitting SC 10 and 20. Cause when you hit SC six, your people are going to hit SC three or nothing. Right. Um, so Anyways, I think it's just, you have to run the race and stay the pace and stay consistent. And eventually, um, I remind myself, Emily Favre and Ashley Molstad were not Emily Favre and Ashley Molstad until five years into the business. Okay. It took, I mean, Ashley was with Emily, but she just hit SC. Like Emily, when I joined her, Emily was a diamond coach. Now she's a superstar diamond, like number three in the network, crazy insane. Um, but you've got to learn to lead alone and set the speed that you want your pack to go lead by example, be the coach that you want to have, I guess. Um, and that's what really inspires me a lot on the days when I don't feel like it too. Well, thank you so much. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> thank you so much for being here and spending your night with us and you know, sharing your heart and your story and being super transparent about, you know, your business and your life and the struggles you've gone through and showing everyone that it's not a straight and narrow path. You know, there's always ups and downs and ebbs and flows. And that's just how this business is. So, you know, you're never alone. Everyone's always going through something. We all know that, but it's nice to hear from someone like Heather, who is so successful that she also has dealt with some of the things that, you know, uh, we have gone through as well, whether it's like in our business or in our personal lives, we all go through something that will try to rock us. And I always feel like the times that that happens, you know, it helps us really discover our strength and who we really are and, you know, who the message that we're meant to share with people. And I know personally from going through my divorce last year, it's taught me that too. So thank you for for being so transparent and vulnerable and just spending time with us and just being so amazing. We appreciate you so much. So thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. I'll see you uh, next week for your team. <laughs> um, but before we go, I do want to share, you can, you can hop off if you have to go. It's fine. Um, I do want to share next week. We are having Sarah Jennings doing our team call. So be sure that you are here. Same time, same place. We'll see you next week, June 2nd. Wow, it's June next week. So lock in those success club goals that you have. 
right now, especially after being on this call. I'm sure you're super motivated to go make that happen and line yourself up for a success club five by the fifth and 10 by the 10th next month. You know, the month is coming to an end, but if you hustle your butt off right now, it's going to help you now, but it's also going to help you next month. You're going to have more people that you're going to be able to talk to and get enrolled next month too. So be here next week for Sarah and everyone have a great night. And that's about it. See you next week. <laughs> Bye.